Hey everyone, we are in uh, Shanghai at this moment. This is the end of our day after tomorrow tour in China and we just wanted to share some uh, of the insights that we got this week because it was a really intriguing and insightful week. Uh, first thing that we noticed here is this is China but it's also WeChat country. Uh, WeChat is part of Tencent. Uh, they have now more than 900 million users. Uh, and sometimes in the West we compare WeChat with Facebook or with WhatsApp, but that is totally wrong. Uh, if you look at the business model of Facebook, it's an advertising model. If you look at the business model of WeChat, it's a transaction-based model. So 66% of the revenues from WeChat come from added value services, like booking taxis, uh, ordering flowers, uh, getting movie tickets. You can basically do everything, and I mean everything in WeChat. Uh, they also make 15% uh, out of the mobile payments. Every single person that we saw this week said, in China, we don't need a wallet, we don't need an ID card, we don't need a credit card. The only thing we need is WeChat. What's also typical is it's not just a B2C platform, it's also a B2B thing. So they uh, use business cards, but what they prefer is that you scan your QR code from WeChat and that you become friends on WeChat in the business world. So this is a B2C, B2B transactional platform, and it's just part of society. If WeChat is down, China is down. I think the second thing that uh, was really interesting is that China is really focusing extremely hard on innovation. And where most people in the West sometimes still have the idea that China is about low cost and about copying, it's really about transforming into maybe the largest innovative powerhouse that we have seen. And what is truly remarkable is the week that we were here, we just had the announcement um, of the One Belt, One Road, the new Silk Road initiative. Um, it has been something that has been uh, starting in the last couple of years, but now really comes to fruition. And where the old Silk Road was really the connection between China and the rest of the world, this new Silk Road initiative is massive. It is really trying to connect the supply of materials into China and the distribution of goods from China to the rest of the world and really cement that type of a relationship but not just focusing on the trade, but also really on the innovation. And I think that is going to be an opportunity where something like WeChat or Alibaba is going to spread to the rest of the world. What it also clearly means is that China is really serious about being at the center of the global economy and is trying to push the US to the fringes of that. And I think what is very interesting is that if you look at history, for thousands of years, the Chinese economy was the dominant uh, economy on the planet. In about 1820, one-third of the world's GDP was Chinese. And then something happened because in 150 years during the Industrial Revolution, China lost it. And if you see that, it went from one-third of the world's GDP to basically nothing and is now rapidly growing to now almost 20%. And it wants to really regain its position as the economic engine of the world. And this Silk Road, this one road, one belt is clearly tying into that. What we also saw is that the extreme vision that you see here with the government, the five-year plans that they make, we see the same thing in companies. They have clear goals, they have a clear vision, they know what they want to achieve by 2025. And what is typical is they take a long time to get to that strategy. The process is pretty long, but the moment that they agree on a strategy, it's one voice. You hear it in the government, as Peter said, but the same thing in companies. If a management team decides on something, it's one voice. And the moment that the management team communicates that to the company, everyone follows that. And then at that moment, their executional power is just amazing. If they say that they're going to achieve something by 2025, they will achieve something by 2025. Um, and we, we had this meeting here at the Mistong, which is an educational platform. And we were really excited about it. And we gave them all kind of new ideas. We said, hey, you can do this, you can do that. They said, thank you for the suggestion, but we know what we need to do. This is our plan. We're going to stick to it. Rome was not built in one day. After that, we will see, but first we need to achieve the objective that we decided. So I was really inspired this entire week with the great vision. They think big in these companies, the one voice, and then the power to actually do what they say they're gonna do. And to pick up on that education, maybe to round it off, I think it's something that we felt very clearly. This is a country where for a very long time it was a one-child policy, and uh, many families have just one child. Uh, they've recently changed the laws that you're allowed to have multiple children, but it's so expensive here in China that most families can't afford the second child. But if you have one child, you want to make sure that that child has all the chances of the future. And what is really important here is that the educational system is really focused on one thing, entrance to the best universities in the country. 
Um, and that's what this educational platform, Miss Tong, is doing, helping kids to accelerate their learning using online and all the capabilities to coach children to make sure that this one chance they have to really make it is going to be something that they don't miss. And I think what we clearly felt here is that the educational capabilities using technology, digital on learning is accelerating. And I think we have to really seriously think about back home, how we think about it, how we prepare for the skills of the future, because here we clearly see that they are. That was what we wanted to share with you. Uh, we invite you to join us on one of our future tours in China because we're going to come back here just like we go to Silicon Valley to discover what the potential is of these innovative regions. So thanks for watching. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. See you next time. Cheers. Bye. -bye.